Welcome back. Today we're going to tie a really simple case caddis. Uh, when I was a really young kid, I mean in the 70s, uh, I was standing in a river one time, I looked down and I just saw these, just these like stripes in the water. And what it was, was these caddis hanging, uh, hanging off their silk lines. And they were just, and, and they're really chartreuse green. I'd never seen this in my life. And I saw all these things just hanging around and off the, the off their their silk lines, and so I I grabbed a couple of them and I, I went back. They were going back up into their silk lines, and they're just they're feeding and their their brachycentrus are uh, hanging back there, and and so I picked some of these cases up, and I thought it was really cool, and I tied a it's now called a peaking caddis. I don't know. I'd never seen this. I hadn't read Gary's book yet, and what you what you'll see is these caddis will either be drifting to change their location or they'll be feeding and they'll be hanging on these silk lines sometimes they're just moving around it's like a safety net for them too there's you know the hydropsyches a lot of them do this silk line thing and gary used to talk about painting his leader white so that it would emulate that right and so this is just a it's a really quick tie i just want to do something pretty simple today and i wanted to show you how i did mine because it was there's been a lot of them done in the last 10, 20 years, uh, and, and Jeremy knew it as the peaking caddis, and I, we didn't really have a name for it, we just knew they ate the hell out of this thing. I do mine a little bit backwards, actually, just as I'm going to do the original version. If you want to reverse this, it'd be more accurate if you do it the other way. Just on my original one, I liked the head back here. My thought was that it would see the brighter color, but I'm just going to show you how I did it. Um, it's a really simple, I used to, like I said, back in the day, we didn't have a lot of these materials. And so uh, I'm gonna go with some just really basic dubbing, life cycle uh, for the case and just some ice dub, really bright chartreuse for the head. I'm gonna upgrade it just slightly. I'm gonna put, back when I tied mine, I took a piece of uh, rabbit skin. I'm gonna, I'll put it in there a little of this anyway. And I would tie this rabbit skin back as to look like the, the legs sticking back. I'm gonna use a little bit of this crystal accent, this stuff here. And just because it's, it's just a cool look, the legs are back there and they're really tight and uh, just, it's just a fun fly, you'll see. And so, but the really unique thing here is what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a, a hackle. Don't use your, your premium hackle. I used to use the worst possible hackle I could find, but back then everything was not very good anyway, but I would use this. I'm going to use the side, one of these side. This is just a tires grade, or tires grade hackle. Uh, it's hard to find bad hackle anymore. So I'm using a 10 aught GSP. This is Roman Mauer Power Silk. And I'm going to hit it with just a little bit of wax. You know, I frequently say I don't like wax in my thread. My buddy Kirk Geech has uh, told me about this because of when you're setting GSP on your hook, it's really hard to get it set because it's so slick, right? It goes, falls off. And so this stuff I'm going to set and, and, and always, like always, whenever I use, when I start my thread, I always have a reason why I do something. I don't start my thread way up here. I start it where the, what, it's going to be the break between the case and the actual caddis itself, right? And so I'm going to have about a third of this be caddis. And so I'm going to start my thread right there. And that's the, the crazy thing. When I started using this wax that Kurt told me about, you put three or four turns and you can just reef on this thing. It just locks that thing in, man. And the, before that, heads up dog, stab the dog. Uh, I got one behind me and I got one underneath me. Uh, it, it helps your tying, I can assure you. This way your back starts hurting way quicker when you're sitting like this. So what I've got here is I've got a third of this tied in. I'm going to take just a couple of these of these crystal accents. I'm going to fold it over so I got two of them. I've got two strands. And I'm just going to put I'm going to put four total legs hanging off this thing. So I'm just going to come in here, pinch this, and I'm going to wrap this. And before, like I said, I used to use just a piece of squirrel or rabbit, whatever, I mean, used to squirrel mostly. And I'd come in on the side, and if you want to do it traditional, it's really easy. You just come in here, and you cut a little tiny piece of these off, and I would tie them in right here, all right? I'm going to do it, it's going to have both, you'll see. I mean, it's, so this was its, this was used to be its legs, and you see there's just a little tiny bit sticking out the front. 
in reality, they probably can't see any of this. So I'm going to cut these legs off. And so now I've got two little legs in here. I'm going to give it a little bit of a bill. You could use, you can, I'm going to use some, uh, I'll use this squirrel. And I'm just going to, I'm just going to finger dub this. I'm not going to do a loop with this one because I don't want it. Now I'm trying to build the actual head sticking out at the case, all right? And so I'm going to take just a little bit of this. This is where I don't like wax on my thread. I do not like, it's almost all guard here. I don't like thread, I don't like wax when I'm gonna dub and try to move my material up and down because it just, it fights me a little bit. And I need to get this underbody in here. I need to have this fur. I was getting that last time when I was pulling on it, all I had were guard hairs. And if I don't get, this is a really fine, this is a great dubbing loop piece, but it's, it doesn't have a lot of fur in it, which is the little fuzzy stuff. And oh, But I only need a little tiny bit because the head is it's just very minuscule. And it's and I really think that I like to have the, the break in there. I, I, I like flies that have a, a real aggressive break where you go, you see the bright green and you see the black and you see the break in the case. It just... To me, when you think about that thing swinging by that fly, that fish, there's got to be some trigger points. You know, one of them's going to be that really bright spot, and that's that's all this head's going to be right here. So I'm going to put this a little bit of, just a little bit of black, and now I'm going to have the case, and I'm, so that's going to be the chartreuse. And you know, there's a lot of case caddis. A lot of them are, are kind of tanny, and a lot of them are. Uh, but generally, when you see a case, there, there'll be chartreuse or tan. Generally, when you see them, they're, they're bright. Those are your brighter caddis, the ones that build a case, because they're inside that case all the time, right? If they're, if they're free form and they're crawling around in the rocks, they'll be dull. They won't be this bright green stuff. They'll be a, a mottled green, you know, olivey stuff. But this fly, because it is a case builder, it's going to end up hanging inside that thing, and it'll be really bright. So I'm going to put this, and then because of that, I'm going to use some super bright... This is just, uh, you can use whatever you want. I, in the old days, I used super fine. But I'm going to use this uh, ice dub. And I need next to none because I'm only going to make this little tiny thing. And I'm going to put this one in an Avon calling. I don't even know if I have Avon anymore. Phone's ringing. So I'm going to put this ice dub in this. I don't need much of it, but I'm going to wrap this super tight. Because it's gonna, I don't. It's not like a, a full caddis where you're gonna see a lot of it, but I still want that segmented body. And when you put it in a loop and you twist, twist this really tight, it gives you a really clean segmented body. So, come in here, and I'm gonna build the taper. Now, very little. I just need a little bit of taper in the front, just so it doesn't look totally fat right there. And then I'm gonna let it get fat in the back but it's not really there's so little bit of this I built that taper it's a V you know like this small at the front and then I'm gonna just twist this up really tight and again most of this has to do with and I'm just picking out the excess junk here most of this has to do with just this two-tone that's all it's about I just want a dark light and super bright on this one Picking all this, I don't want it really fuzzy. If you use, if you use super fine or other dubbings that are not quite so coarse as this, you'll get a tighter body. But I like the sparkle on this particular, on this body. So now I've got the little head sticking out of here, the little antenna sticking out, the feelers back here, really bright and green. I got some stragglers here. You know, I get people write me in all the time. I'm not wearing my cheaters. One of you wrote me and told me that I should uh, jump into the 20th century and get a thing called a bifocal in my glass. I did that. Thanks for your advice. I had it before, too, but they weren't quite good enough to use, so I'm fighting this. I can assure you if I drop, this is a size 12. If I go, or is this is a 14, this is a 14. If I go to a size or two smaller, I'm going back to the cheaters. So now I'm going to build. I'm going to build this case that this thing would be hanging out of. And this is what's unique about mine. And you know, this this may be a little bit overkill, but I don't. 
I, I like to do things for a purpose. And so I'm going to build this body out of two different things. When these, the thing that struck me when I saw these things, and they have a very unique square shape to their case. And, they, and it's a very tapered case. And so you're, you're building these things and you don't have anything to make a square with. And that's what makes this one unique. So I'm going to use hackle. I'm going to use a tanny, a little bit of brown in that, in the, in the dubbing. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a hackle. And because hackle's so much longer and better nowadays, uh, I can get away with one. I used to use, I'd use two or three of these actually, because you just didn't have this, the density. And so I'm going to take one hackle in here. And I'm going to, now this case, Jeremy explained this to me earlier, being the little bug guy he is, how they, they get this taper to their body. And it's very thin up here, and it's thicker at the front. And how they do that is that they, do, they build their cases when, when they're young. And as they build it, as they're growing, they use their arm, the length of their arm, and they take this whatever bark material that they get, and they bite it off the length of their arm. And so as their arms grow, the case grows, butts at the end, it's the skinniest, he's sticking out the front, and he builds this really cool taper. Well, that'd be really hard to do it just dubbing, right? So first thing I'm going to do, is I'm going to take this hackle first on. First put this on the, uh, right here. And this, you'll see this in a second, what it's all about. Just like always, figure eight. And now, hey, don't do that. Now I'm going to take, I'm going to put a, a pretty loose dubbing loop together. Try not to hook that hackle. Tip, doesn't matter. And again, if you've got some junk hackle, this is a great place to get rid of it, because you'll see, we're going to cut it all off. But because I'm going to have the dark, and, and generally, it'll have to do with where you live. If you live in a, a really dark bottomed river, and most of the bark and stuff they're building these out of is, is dark, and then go darker all the way. Most of the ones I see are kind of olivey tan and, you know, a little bit of hint of brown in them. And so I'm going to do that with it. I'm going to take a lighter color dubbing, and I don't care. I, in the old days, I used uh, goat dubbing. It was really cheap. Uh, I've still got a bunch of it over there somewhere. It's not as easy to use as this stuff. But I'm going to take this, and I'm going to, I don't care about too much about a taper here. I'm just going to do one-third, two-third. I'm just going to start this a little bit. Whenever I, whenever I blend dubbings for modeling and stuff like that, you start light, just like you would with anything if you're painting. You start light and you tone dark. And so I use whatever, whenever I do this, and I just a lot of my dries, you know, you see other videos we do for that, but I do two thirds of the light color, one third of the dark, and I simply go like this. I just pull it over one, two, Three. I'm not trying to blend it as one color. I want it to come a little bit of brown here, a little bit of tan there, and so. But I don't want it to be just tanny brown. I want it to be mottled, and so I don't really try to blend it all as one color. Right now, I'm just picking the junk out of there, and so I, I'm not worrying about too much of a taper. But the taper does exist in this, and so I'm going to make the biggest part of this because the fattest part of the of the case is where the you know, the, the adult is sitting is at the top, which would be in the middle here. And so I'm going to take this loop and I'm going to make it a little bit thicker towards the front. Add it upside down there. Put him in there. Get in there. And then, pow. I'm going to just, just move this, just tighten it up a little bit to start. And then you can let it roll. And again, a lot, most of this, I don't know if you can see that or not, but it, now I have a two-tone kind of variegated effect to this. It's a little bit tighter here than there. I'm going to just move that around. Okay, now I've got a nice, it's a very little taper to this. I'm going to come in right here, right in front of that, and I'm going to build this bigger, it's just going to be bigger at the front up here, and I'm just letting it get down there. A little bit more taper towards the back. This is really, this is probably really overkill. I, I don't care. Uh, you know, everybody wants to tie stuff so fast. I just want to see stuff done. I like to, I like to have a little fun with these things. It, 
I mean, if you want to sit down and tie a hundred of them and you just want to fill your box up, skip this particular step, but it's, it's just cool. You'll see what I mean. And so now, hopefully I got enough hackle here to do this all the way through. Like I said, in the old days, I would tie two hackles in. And now I'm going to, I'm going to just wrap this really thick, right? Is, you know, just overkill really thick, 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 thick. I'm not used to doing one with a good hackle. I want to, I, I had more than I, I haven't tied one of these things in probably 15 years and I've never tied one with this good a hackle. So now I'm going to, I just had lots of excess. So I'm going to, I'm going to put more than I would have normally. Wow. That's going to be cool. All right. It's a woolly worm, right? Well, broke my hackle stem. Okay. Now, you're saying that doesn't look like anything I've ever seen. But back to what I said earlier, if you've seen one of these, they have a very square case. Well, it's really hard to wrap something around and get square on it. So this is what I came up with, and it was just, it was just kind of fun. And I'm going I'm to build this taper now with the, the hackle by being able to cut it flat and square and I come on the side and it just, just, you can see I'm kind of angling this up. It, in reality, it probably makes no difference. It's just fun to do something right, right? And so I'm gonna come on the side and I'm just cutting this kind of square tube. So now it's kind of hard to see, but at least it is for me because I put my new glasses on. So now I have this really cool little variegated, and it's, it's hard to see right up close, but it's got a square shape to it. And again, it means probably absolutely nothing, but it's kind of fun to do. It's a, it's a good, it's a good uh, it makes you feel good when you know you did everything you can to fool that little pea brain trout. But it's just, I think you can see everything there. You can see its legs sticking up. That's a new addition to put the crystal accent in there. But you've got this really two-tone body. This thing should be pretty tight. I got that a little fuzzy. But look at that. So now you've got your, can you see the square in that, Jeremy? Not really. No? You know, I was just thinking, I've never tied one of these with this good a hackle. It might be better tied if you did it with a hand, you know, a more webby hackle, but it's so little that it, I don't think it would matter. But what you'll see is it's just a really, it's a, it's a fun way to do it. Waste a, waste a little hackle, maybe waste a little time. But the fish dig this fly. And I don't know if they still dig it without the, the I, I hardly ever tied one in any other way than this, but it's a really cool little fly. It's got a really cool silhouette in the water. Gives you a great impression of that caddis. And again, if you wanted to switch this, because accurately, while it was hanging from its silk line, it would be hanging out of its hanging out of its head, right? And so, if you were to swap this, it would be more accurate, and you could have just reverse everything. You know, its head hanging out here. And if you've never read Gary's book on caddisflies, you should. The book Caddisflies, and you'll see what he was talking about was he would take his leader and he would he'd take these these pens. I can't remember what they used, what they were. They were, and he would mark his leader white. So you'd actually, the fish actually would see his leader as the silk line. It's a pretty cool thought process. Hope that helps you out.